Jesse, give him the rundown.
please stand. Holy God, creator of heaven and earth. Holy and mighty, redeemer of the world. Holy immortal one, sanctifier of the faithful. Holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God. Have mercy upon us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil intent. Savior, deliver us. From sloth, worldliness, and love of money, from hardness of heart, and contempt for your word and your laws. Savior, deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from deceits of the world, flesh, and the devil. From famine and disaster, from violence, murder, and dying unprepared. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of our death, and at the day of our judgment. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, by the preaching of your reign. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit. Savior, deliver us. Hear our prayers, O Christ our God. Hear us, O Christ. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth, and grant that unity which is your will. Hear us, o Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all the nations. Hear us, o Enlighten your bishops, priests, and deacons, especially John our bishop with the knowledge and understanding that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Hear us, o Christ. Give your people grace to witness to your word and bring forth the fruit of your spirit. Hear us, O Christ. 
Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, O Christ. Guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of peace and justice. Hear us, O Christ. Give your wisdom and strength to Joe. The President of the United States, Gavin, the Governor of this state, Michael, the Mayor of this city, that in all things they may do your will for your glory and the common good. Hear us, O Christ. Give to the Congress of the United States, the members of the President's Cabinet, those who serve in our state leg legislature and all others in authority the grace to walk always in the ways of truth. Hear us, o Christ. Bless the justices of the Supreme Court and all those who administer the law, that they may act with integrity and do justice for all your people. Hear us, o Christ. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory and for the good of all. Hear us, o Christ. Bless and keep all your people. Hear us, O Christ. Comfort and liberate the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Hear us, O Christ. Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in peril. Hear us, O Christ. Heal the sick in body, mind, or spirit, and provide for the homeless, the hungry, and the destitute. Hear us, O Christ. Guard and protect all children who are in danger. Hear us, O Christ. Shower your compassion on prisoners, hostages, and refugees, and all who are in trouble. Hear us, O Forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Hear us, O Christ. Hear us as we remember those who have died, and grant us with them a share in your eternal glory. Hear us, O Christ. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your word. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Who bears our burdens and gives our sins. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, 
Let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After he was baptized by John, Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sin and evil are socially transmitted diseases of the soul. Socially transmitted diseases of the soul. You can catch it anywhere. You catch it early in life, and you repeat it over and over again. How does one catch this socially passed along disease? By imitating what goes before you. You've heard tit for tat. Um, Some of the best environments, by the way, if you wish to practice evil and sin is the Facebook page. Or what are the other ones that might be appropriate? Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. I'm not a tweet, I'm not a tweeter, but 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 you know what? You can do it in community too. Uh, just think about our ancestors. This lovely story about our progenitors, our first uh, parents. Um, And in that setting, they had this other creature of God, God created. And that creature said, you know what God told you? It's probably not true. Uh, Really, you you think you're going to die if you eat that beautiful fruit? I mean, I think the devil ought to have been an ad man. Imagine that. You can have the fruit of every tree in this garden, but that one, no, no, you don't want to do that one. It's like telling a little kid, don't touch this hot stove. Just before they touch it. So, this story is about this socially contagion of temptation and desire. And Eve gets it. But remember, do you know who was told not to eat it first? Adam. He got the word, and he's standing next to her, and he doesn't say, hey, don't do that. She knows. She obviously was told. 
And she repeats it. Oh, that isn't true. And so often, sometimes the way we treat one another is a clear expression of this socially transmitted disease. The tit for the tat, the looking for somebody to blame so you don't get blamed. How many have had that experience? I remember <coughs> when I was at Christchurch, I had a pretty high-powered executive. And she said, I always worry that at some point, the flying fickle finger of fate will land on me, and I'll be the one who gets blamed. Blame is a way we deal with our sin. That's how humanity has dealt with sin and actually created the very definition of sin by passing it on to the scapegoat. Usually not even responsible for what the problem is, but the easiest one to mark as the problem. Usually those who are poor or powerless. And the socially transmitted disease of sin and evil continues to take place generation after generation. It is passed on. Uh, I got picked on, as you've heard, uh, but I also got picked on when I lived in Kansas, so I, I guess it's not a California thing. And I was coming back, I was coming back from uh, school, and a bunch of guys, uh, actually my brother, he's faster than me, so he got away. I didn't. And I went home, and I told my mom and dad, I said, I just got beat up. And my dad said, get him over here, we'll have a boxing match. But I don't think I want to do that. But that's what my dad had learned from his dad and from his, the generations before that. That's what Cain learned and exercised that freedom of sin on his brother, Cain, or Abel. From the beginning, we continue to do the same thing over and over again and always the same result. It's plain old sin and evil. And every Sunday, pretty much, except for maybe Easter, right, Rachel? We say confession. Today we did a nice long one, huh? <laughs> I think we covered everything. <laughs> and perhaps you have some of your own you'd like to add. And, and we'll sing with you, have mercy upon you. Josh preached on Ash Wednesday. How many got to hear that sermon? Okay, I want to repeat something that Josh said. That I was sitting down there, and boy, it really, it really got me. He said, we're going to say, you are dust, and to dust you shall return when we marked you with the sign of the cross. But it's also a sign that you are loved. You are that beautiful, we are all that beautiful pile of dust that God created and blew life into. And we've all got the opportunity to seek forgiveness. Love is about forgiving. During Lent, we're asked to really examine ourselves and it's really hard to examine yourself if you're feeling shame, if you don't feel good about who you are, if you don't feel loved, if you've learned over and over again, it doesn't pay to be honest about who you are and what's really going on inside of you. And the church is a one place you can come, or AA meetings, and be honest. At least generically honest. But you can rehearse in your heart what God needs to be given and what you need to receive back from God. At communion, we're going to sing, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. What's the next line? Have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. Lord, Lord, have mercy on us. You take away the sin. That is the way we've managed sin in the past. 
have mercy on us as we become honest, as we confess. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. And the last verse is, grant us your peace. The peace of God which passes all understanding. It's not the way the world gives peace. It's a peace that transcends that socially transmitted evil that we've inherited. And during this Lent, we're bid to make the walk to Calvary and to share with God the things that brings God to the cross and that brings us to the cross. And we say, Lord, have mercy. Amen. Please stand as we reaffirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also Greet one another with the sign of Christ's love. Good morning. Welcome to St. Cross. Now is the moment in our service where we talk about signs of Christ's love in our community, one of which is to welcome you if you are new or visiting with us, and we hope you will sign the book in the back. And if you're a regular, it's great to be back with you after three weeks. Um, so I, I missed you all. Um, let's see, important things. If you would like prayers to be put on our prayer list, please fill out the card in your pew um, and put that in the plate when we pass the plate and that will be added in. And if you would like to give to St. Cross, I think most of you know by now you can use the QR code on the back of your bulletin. And don't worry, I know you're coming, Sue. I, I know you're there. Um, the other thing is today is our, tonight is our family service at 5 p.m. It is for everyone, not just families. Um, and you are welcome to join us for our Faith at Five service. But now we are going to have a little note from our bell choir. You know, the people who are over there and they make the really great music. St. Cross has a hand bell choir. We are a friendly group and we're looking for a few new ringers. <laughs> we rehearse only one hour a week on Thursday evening 
We play in church once a month. Next Sunday, we're having a session we're calling Meet the Bells. You can come pick up a bell, you can ring it, you can swing it, you can shake it, you can hit it with a mallet, and more to see if this fun activity might be for you. Thank you, Sue. So come and meet the bells next week. That's what I have to say. Um, as you know, it is the start of Lent, and uh, we have many offerings. We are actually joining with Christ Church and St. Andrews in Redondo Beach uh, to do our Lenten offerings this year. And we started with Stations of the Cross. We are praying the Stations of the Cross um, throughout the South Bay, throughout uh, Lent on Fridays at 6. It takes about half an hour. And is one who, under a week ago, was literally walking on the stations of the cross on the Via Della Rosa. I really encourage you to take time, um, to take a moment in your day to stop and to pray the stations. And, you know, Fridays at 6, you're done at 6.30, you can go have a nice little meal and um, and but take that moment. The other thing is, is we have an online Lenten study group. And again, we're joining with Christ Church online and St. Andrews. So Tuesday at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., we will be uh, doing a Lenten curriculum on beloved community. And um, I will be teaching Josh, will, Reverend Josh will be teaching um, Reverend Julie over at Christ Church. Um, and it's, it's going to be a shared time. So I hope that you will be able to join us. I know it's not soup supper in the parish hall. We are trying new things, folks. We keep moving forward. It's good. And Bitsy, aren't you glad you don't have to go make soup every Wednesday night? You can just open a can at home and hop online. It's all good. Um, a few other things. St. Patrick's Day Parade is in two weeks. We need people to come and help us decorate and march with us in the parade. Miss Cameron Johnson, who is in the back, she's wearing red, which is not the appropriate color for St. Patrick's Day, which, by the way, is like a pass on Lent. It's like a feast day in the middle of Lent for the parade. Um, let's see. Other than that, I think the major... Um, Information is in your bulletin. Sack lunch is coming up. The funeral for Maureen Husted will be in two weeks on uh, Saturday. And if you are looking for baptisms, please let the office know our next baptisms will be on Easter morning. So thank you for being with us today, and I hope you join us afterwards for coffee and donuts if they're allowed on your Lenten journey um, after the service. I appeal to you by the mercies of God to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, O holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we fail to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation abused one another and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed, out, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with all your saints past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray.
This is the banquet of the Lamb. It is made ready for those who love God and those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have failed, come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his, God's will that those who want to know God should meet God here.
Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Bow your head before the Lord. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. 